Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams, and I'm your host. And we're coming to you live from our beautiful studios here at BNN TV. And to my right and to your left, of course, is the lovely Valerie Elias. And Thank Val. you. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Gosh, it's been almost three weeks. Three weeks. I don't like that. I don't like that. Well, I don't either. like it either. But we're here tonight, and we're coming to you live from beautiful Studio B, and you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. We're at 617 708 3290. Give us a call. Dave's in the other room with a great staff here at BNN answering the phone. So if you have any questions or you just want to tell us what's going on in your community, artfully or in your life, please feel free to give us a call. Let us know about paintings you're making, maybe. Yes, let us know what you're doing. Yeah. So what's going on? How are you? Oh, geez, I'm great. Not loving this rainy weather uh, we're well, having. That's okay. That's part of it. Yeah. Makes the grass grow. But, ah, oh, gosh, I, I've done so many artful things over the past wow, couple weeks. That's really good. You made a nice trip down to the point? Yes, down to P-Town on Memorial Day weekend. It was so fun. Now, did you drive, take the whole drive, or did I you? I did not no, drive. Good. Okay, I got good. tickets, ferry tickets, back in, like, February. Oh, good So, you. just took an Uber over to um, the ferry port. Yep. Two-hour ferry ride. Excellent. Easy peasy. Good. Yeah. Good. Provincetown is beautiful. There's lots of great things. I used to play in a little club on, in Truro where we'd go down. We'd end up spending the week down there because oh, it awesome. was back in the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday days. And it was great. I <gasps> loved it down there. I had no idea. Well, I mean, I've been there before, but not since I was probably seven or eight. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how huge of an art community there was. Just yeah, gallery after gallery galleries. after gallery. It's, yeah. Oh, it was a dream. It's a very artful place. Yeah. And, uh, and it's good, it's good to go down to do, do that kind of thing. You know what's coming up this next weekend is the Great Farmer's Market. And Roswell yes, is opening this sixth. coming Saturday. Uh, opposite people will be performing. I'll be at the music uh, controls. Make sure you come by and say hello. Please let us know what's going on. So exciting. Yeah, I'm, I can't wait to get it started oh, up again. I can't wait to. It's like this great meeting place, you know. And... And we get a couple of thousand people every Saturday. So if so you want to, if there's someone you're looking for to run into or meet, that's the place to do it. And it's so funny, too, because as many people uh, that come by every Saturday, I always find a parking spot like that. <laughs> it's not a bad place to be <laughs> because we have those great places to park in yes. Rosie Square. It's a really cool thing. I have a little announcement that I, I got coming up. I've just been, um, the mayor's got, we had the people from the mayor was, mm -hmm. was on with us not too long ago talking about Boston Creates. Yes, it's very exciting. Very exciting. I was just named one of the co-chairs for our area of the city. Congratulations. Thank you. With, with Jocelyn Hutt, H-U-T-T, -T, who is part of the Main Street program mm -hmm. out there in Rosendale. So her and I are going to be working with City Hall to try and get some decide how artful things need to kind of work around here in the yeah. city. So I'm going to be a liaison for the people to the city. That's kind of exciting. That's incredible. Yeah. I, it's such a great project to be a part yeah. of. And I mean, who and, better and than it's you? And it's nice. It's only going to be for a short amount of time. I think we're trying to we more getting mission statements and stuff. Next to tomorrow night is a big, meet, big, big gathering over at English High in Jamaica Plain. Okay. Right across from Doyle's at uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow night is this big meeting. Nice. Come on by. Everybody's invited to come in and kind of meet the chairs and get a, get an opportunity to talk a little bit about the actual um, adventures we're planning for the city. Any kind of, sneak peek previews? Well, there's for a, us? well I, you know, I'm going to let them make them those announcements. <laughs> Uh, I think that I'm, I'm basically trying to get in. I'm, I'm gathering information yeah. and, and putting it in a form where they can get, you know, get some of that kind of thing together and done. That's so exciting. Yeah. We're proud of you, Glenn. Oh, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It was kind of like a shot out of the dock. I didn't expect it. And uh, all of a sudden, there it was. <laughs> oh, that's great. And our big art show is a week from Wednesday. At Sacred Heart, it's from 5:30 to 7:30. There's yes. going to be it, it's a it's a huge. There'll be about 300 and something pieces of art there, about 100 sculptures uh, from different student levels and what have you. That's we have incredible. some special guests and stuff coming by. So we're inviting the public to come by mm -hmm. and, and see what we're doing there with our our stream and our STEAM uh, educational process. So it's going to be kind of fun. That's yeah, really I'm exciting. Looking forward. Right now, it's kind of like. Argh! You know, get your, where's your peas? Crazy. Uh, but it, it, it'll get done. 
good. I promise. Oh, that's so exciting. So what else is new? How's Klaus? Ah, uh, Klaus is Klaus. I uh, put in the air conditioner in the apartment so he's happy. Good. He does not like the heat. I can't imagine sure. anybody that big and hairy would be <laughs> yes. happy about the Klaus humidity. Klaus is a rabbit, just so <laughs> everyone knows. <laughs> Oh, but he's great. That's good. Uh, any shows that you've been working uh, well, on? Well, uh, we 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 got a couple of things coming up. We're ready to release the the country album, and I think we've been booking. We're looking to book dates at the Paradise and at no kidding. Paradise. We're going to be looking over in Somerville at Johnny D's, okay. and I think we'll probably do a Midway show down in Jamaica Plain. So, uh, low budget records will book that up, and we'll. We'll fill the place up with a bunch of. Oh, I'd love to go to the one at the Paradise. Yeah, I love Paradise that is going to be fun. Yeah, 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 it's a great place to play. So we're looking forward to that, and it'll be, uh, it'll be great. Oh, that's so yeah. awesome. How about yourself? Have you done anything artful except looking at other people's work? <laughs> I gotta kick myself in the butt a little bit. I gotta get. There goes that resolution. Going no. It's okay. Find time. You know, you just you know. Uh, I, I should talk. I mean, I don't have a lot of time to do it either. You know, between school and the Boys and Girls Club and all this, that, and the other thing, it's, it's kind of been tough to get, get an easel up on myself, yeah. too. But I've been doing a lot of sketching, so I have a bunch of ideas of stuff that I want to do. I like to think that I'm accumulating ideas and mm -hmm. inspiration. Mm -hmm. That's maybe my excuse. That's good. That's, that's, that works. Yeah. You know, that's cool. I Are like you... supporting the local artists. Yes. Uh, open Studios has uh, oh, announced their, uh, the, it's open now to go get your applications and get yes, all of that stuff. Yes, the Rosendale Open Studios. The Rosendale Open so Studios exciting. is ready for, for run. Uh, if you go to open stu Rosendale Open Studios org, they can take care of that or just do any kind of search for Rosendale Open Studios. It'll get you right to the website where you can register and all that. And the Rosendale Porch Fest is, is yes. all is starting to roll downhill now. So in September, right? It's September 12th. Okay. So if anybody has a porch or, or wants to, Porch Fest is where people get to walk around the community and the neighborhood and listen to live music uh, all around the place. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to doing that. Andy Hollinger is chairing that. Uh, Janice and I are helping out where we can. Ros uh, the Rosnell Arts Alliance is the sponsor. So. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be really awesome. Uh, I, if I make it that long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, we'll see geez. how it's going on. Are you guys playing for the Porch Fest? I don't, you know, I think that we probably will play later on in the okay. day. You know, but uh, uh, at the beginning, I think I've got to be able to ride around and make sure things are going smoothly. clicking off the way they should. Without a hitch, yeah. Yeah, so then I'll probably jump up on a porch. <laughs> Later on in the afternoon, yes. and do a half a set or something, you know. I think, yeah, but, but I think, yeah, we'll get a chance to play. I definitely look forward to it. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, I think that's about all. We got a great show tonight. Oh, we have an amazing show. We've got an incredible artist, photographer. We've got. We've also got. We're gonna be talking cooking. Got a Some great goodies. chef in, in an old friend Eric Hall is here, mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna have a great show. Are you uh, do you have anything else you want to get out there and let anybody know about? Oh geez, um, well I have a great Val's View segment okay, coming good. up. I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. You know what we should do is we speaking of that open uh, uh, the farmers market. Uh, we really do have to thank our good friends uh, at uh, the. Uh, uh, the Boston Main Streets organization, they are helping us keep this show on the air. Uh, we are into our 17th season. That's at the incredible. end of the summer, we'll be starting 18 years here at BNN. Uh, and for a lot of that time, we've been, been supported by the Boston Main Streets organization. Boston Main Streets is a volunteer driven organization that helps revitalize business districts around the city. What they do is they, they meet with the property owner that has an empty storefront, they give them all their demographic information that they need. The, the, who, what people are paying for inside and outside of that business community, what would be the best kind of business to put in the, in the empty storefront. Then they have a design community that helps that new business owner, because the, the, the model is kind of like, let's not have another Staples, let's not have yeah. another, I'll, I'll, I'll say the names, Staples, let's not bring in another Starbucks, let's not bring in another Dunkin', let's bring in a family yes. run business that, that kind of caters to that part of the community and the design committee helps them get their shop designed, help them with signage, make sure they get through the city hall process and all that, the permits and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Then there's the promotion committee that brings people down into the community by putting on events. Like the farmer's market. Like the, just like the farmer's market and different events, bringing people down to the see 
the kind of cool things that are there. And there are a lot of cool things. Yeah, and this is a volunteer-driven organization. Yeah, these people love the community. Yeah, well, that's why they do it. They love the community just like you and I do. And, and so if you see them, tell, tell them that Val and Glenn said thank you for supporting this and supporting their community. They're a great bunch of people. It is a great bunch of people. Yeah. The other thing I want to talk about there is this beautiful building that we're in, BNN TV. We're at 3025 Washington Street, right outside of, right in Eggleston Square. And uh, what it is, it's the old uh, power station for the MBTA. If anyone goes back far enough to remember the Rattler, the they used to line, go right? Orange Line. <laughs> Eric knows the, the Orange Line down Washington Street. Uh, this is where they got their power. And it stayed dormant for a long, long, long time. And what has happened is BNN. Uh, a few years ago, seven or eight years ago, took the building over, and with Urban Edge and when some great uh, development people came in and turned this into two state-of-the-art television studios, as well as a great Timothy Smith uh, computer lab on the first floor. So what they do is, if you have a nonprofit and you want to get your mission statement out and you want to bring in guests to talk about what you're doing and stuff, this is the place to come and do that, uh, just, like, just like Val and I are doing so yeah. you'll come in and people can call in and ask questions. Did I tell them that I, I did ask people to call? Any calls yes. in there? No, no, no one, no one yet. No, let's see. What's the number again? 617-708-3290. That's right. That's how you get through <laughs> to this. Uh, but there's two sides to being in. There's this side, news and information, where you get your nonprofit, get it out there, and you get all that kind of information so people will learn about what you're doing. Then there is the access side, which is the most exciting thing. You come in and join BNN as a member, and you take all of these Final Cut Pro lighting, sh lighting classes, how to run these amazing cameras that uh, we have the great staff running today, how to do editing, how to do sound, how to do everything. Sign out the cameras, go out into your community, shoot whatever's happening, the Little League game or, or the political debate on the corner, come back in here to the Timothy Smith lab, edit it down, and they put it on TV. So many great resources down yes. there. Yes, yes. Really great. And the other thing that's great is that you can go and see some of our past shows because yes. they have a video on demand. It's so exciting. Yes, I'm so glad yes. that we're uh, one of the guinea pigs. Yes, we're, they're, they're trying it out on us, and we're very, very proud of that. So the VOD here uh, has a bunch of our past shows, and it's going to have this show on in a week, in a, a week to ten days, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. It's so, so exciting. Um, but if you can't wait for that, if you go right to your computer now, it is playing streaming live. Yes. It's midnight in Paris. Hello, Paris. <laughs> Hello, bonjour. If you're in Paris <laughs> watching the show, it's midnight. It's almost bedtime. Yeah. But it, it streams all over the world, so we're very, very fortunate. And I know that it works because we get emails from people from Seattle oh, to yeah, Texas. Texas. We have people down in Florida or Upper State New York. So we're, we're kind of getting everybody to, to check out what we've been doing. Yeah. BNNTV.org. BNNTV.org. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's Very how you cool. Do it. Join our Facebook page. Yes. We're, we're not quite to that half, half a decade. <laughs> Am I right? Thousand? Half a millennia? Half a millennia. We're almost at 500. <laughs> <laughs> so we need some more likes, guys. Why don't you be the 500th one? It'll be a lot of fun. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll get you to enjoy that. I love That's our about. Facebook page. I do too. It's great. There's lots of great information on Oh, there. yeah. Anything else? Oh, geez. Um, I look forward to our guests. Yes, I am too. Listen, you know what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. We're going to do a Val's View, and we're going to get right to our first guests. Listen, gang, don't go away. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. If you want to join us, we're at 617-708-3290. Uh, my name is Glenn. Of course, to my right is the lovely Valerie Elias. And listen, gang, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please do not go away.
Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging out with us. Listen, you're back at Studio B here at BNN TV. My name's Glenn Williams. I'm your host, and you are watching It's All About Arts. Another quick reminder, please don't forget to go to our Facebook page and like us. Val and I would really, really appreciate that. That would be an awful lot of fun. But you know what? It's time for, and I've missed it because I've been away. I'm looking forward to this version of, uh, of Val's View. So hang in there, gang. Listen, it's time for Val's View. Well, thanks, Glenn. I missed it, too, a little bit. Well, a lot of it, actually. I love bringing, uh, bringing the fun events to everyone in Boston. So we got a bunch of things going on over the next couple weeks. Uh, there's going to be a touching experience that's going on June 5th from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, it's at the BB Estate Gallery. Uh, so a touching experience is an exhibition um, that's a celebration of art accessible to everyone. The exhibit is curated. Uh, to be enjoyed by both sighted people and blind individuals. Um, in addition to touchable art, there's going to be musical performances um, by sighted and blind musicians. There's going to be family collage workshops. There's going to be braille demonstrations. Uh, the opening reception is June 5th. However, it's going to be going on every Saturday in the month of June. So don't worry about it if you're not around this weekend. Uh, it's definitely something to go check out. Uh, so second on our list, we have South Boston Open Studios. This is probably one of my favorite open studios. I might be a little biased because I did participate in it a couple times a few years ago. Uh, but it's in a great building, the distillery, uh, over in South Boston. It's going on this weekend, June 6th and 7th. It happens from noon to 6 p.m. So many incredible, incredible local Boston artists in there. Uh, and twice a year, only twice a year, they open up their doors, all the artists and craftspeople to everyone, uh, the public. It's free, which is the best of all. And uh, you get to see some of the local art and even purchase some if you're interested. Uh, so third on our list, we have the Boston Pride Parade. Uh, this is one of the funnest events in the city, in my opinion. Uh, it's going on June 13th at noon at the Copley Square. Uh, so it goes around a whole uh, route around Back Bay area. Uh, so Boston Pride is a celebration for an entire week. And there are numerous, numerous events and uh, fun things that are going on during that week. But the parade is only for one day. So it's definitely something that you don't want to miss. It's it has spectacular floats, amazing entertain entertainment, and great people. Uh, it is really a blast, so colorful, and everyone is just really full of life. So definitely go check it out. It's free, which is even better. Uh, and yeah, it's a great, a great parade, great time for the whole family. Uh, so fourth on our list, we have a fourth thing on Val's view today, uh, Boston Grown Ups Museum. And that's going on Thursday, June 11th from 6 to 9 p.m. And that's located at the Boston Children's Museum. But they're switching things up a little bit so the grown ups can have a fun night on, on the town. Uh, now this is a big kid event, so it's going to be 21 plus. Uh, the Boston Children's Museum is opening their doors to those who are young at heart. Uh, uh, you'll get to explore all of the museum's usual great exhibits. Um, and of course, there's going to be some beer and wine for you to enjoy and tasty treats. Uh, the event will be sure to awaken the big kid in you. Uh, now, tickets do sell out quickly for this event, so you definitely want to go online and get them soon. Um, it'll be a blast. I'm definitely looking into going going to it myself. Uh, so thanks so much for staying tuned to Val's View. It's always my pleasure to bring to you the events and exhibits that are going around the city. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to throw it back to Glenn to introduce our wonderful guests. Back to you, Glenn. Well, thank you, Val. That was great. Did my buddy Dan Nicole from South Boston get you to say that that was your favorite uh, uh, open studios. Dan is I a big no South idea Boston what you're guy. Talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And you're right, though. It's a great, great event. Listen, gang. I want to remind you one more time that if you go to our uh, to our www.bnntv.org, click on the VOD video on demand. You can see some of our great past shows, and you can check out this one in a very short time. But without further ado, it's my great pleasure and honor to. Uh, Reintroduce you and introduce you to a, a great chef, Chef Timothy. Hello, Timothy. How are you? Timothy great. Tucker, right? Yes. Thank you very much. And old Thanks. pal Eric, Eric Hall. Yes. How are you, bro? Great, Glenn. Good Everything's to be back. okay? Always, yes. Everything's good great. To, good to see you. Thank you very much for coming back to our, coming back to this show. Eric's been on in the past promoting his, his book and his organization. He's had his lovely daughter 
on the Elyon with us, um, and uh, it's been it's it's working out pretty good, oh, right? Oh, definitely <laughs> is, definitely is. Um, um, Chef uh, Tucker, can I call you that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, what? Uh, tell me a little bit about what. Um, What's going on here? You, you've got an organization that, that you want to talk a little bit about. Yeah. And it's an educational deal. Yeah. What's it we operate out of the, do you know the Croc Center? I do. Yeah. So we're 650 Dudley Street yep. in Dorchester. Uh, and we run a culinary program. So for 10 weeks, 250 hours, it's, a, it's actually a free program for people in transition uh -huh. that are looking to better themselves in the culinary arts and then potentially continue to get better with the profession of cooking in the industry. So the the goal here is is to get more chefs out there in in, in the in the rotation. I'm thinking. We're trying, you know, just like a culinary school would tell you, yeah. we're trying to produce like good cooks. Okay. And yeah, then yeah, you know yeah. maybe that they go to be at, work on as a salad, you know, to do salads or work on a line, or maybe they're doing catering or whatever. Okay. But we found uh, Eric is kind of our secret weapon mm -hmm. because on Mondays we have a life skills. Piece. And yeah. This kind of helps us with not only resume writing, but just everything that it takes to really make sure you're going to keep that job and, yeah, yeah. and do the right thing. Yeah. You opened the door, Eric. I'm going to ask you a question in a second, but you opened the door. What's the difference between a cook and a chef? Well, I mean, you know, it's like the chief of the, you know, it's the, you know, it's <coughs> the, it's the person that's running the show. The chef is. The, yeah. Is, okay. Pushing. Imagine being in a kitchen and everyone calling each other yeah. the chef. And right. Yeah, so there's always just got to be one person directing the traffic. I worked at the Parker House. Oh, awesome. At Parker's restaurant. I was their buyer for a bunch of years. Oh, thank How was that? It's, no one was happy. <laughs> That's all I know. Yeah. No, though, I mean, they were happy, but they weren't. It, yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing to see what happens. I mean, I yeah. know that it is. The, I, was, I was right next to the Bay Marie, so if I did anything wrong, that's where I ended up. We're, well, Eric and I are nice. You know, we're here to, to build people up. You know, I know no, that, I understand. And we're here to, to help them get to where they need to go. Right. right. You know? Eric, Eric, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having me back. very Thank much you. for being here. Uh, tell me a little bit about what, tell us about your organization first. Give us a little bite again about what you guys are doing and what you're involved in and how the hook here is. What's the one that you know, well, I've been in the community for 20 years teaching just personal development and mm -hmm. financial education uh, to the urban community. And I came on as a guest speaker for the first, for the first life, life skills coach. And she was in transition. And because I work from home and I run my companies from home, uh, it was a natural fit. I came in, I spoke to the group, and when she was in transition, it was just a good fit. You know, Chef and I, we clicked, and it was like, wow, would you like to be the life skills coach? And I came and I interviewed, and I kind of had the job five minutes into the interview um, based on the, the person interviewing me. And it was a good fit because the things I brought to the culinary class and to that environment was what I already teach, uh -huh. which is personal development, which is getting better individually, how each individual can get better and mm -hmm. change their financial picture, you know, their marital situation, their family situation, their involvement in the community. Mm -hmm. And so what I really do is in the life skills piece is really help people become better individuals. Right, right, um, right. And if they become a chef, they become a better chef because now the life skills pieces that we've added right. from, you know, being strong emotionally to how, what, what is your perspective? How do you see the world? Because sometimes with a limited perspective, you may limit opportunities. Mm -hmm. So in the class, I do a lot of mind stretching and really helping them to see how big the world of culinary is, also how their place in the, in the world of cooking and culinary. And so, you know, just being able to do that with folks, it was a natural fit for me. Uh, and I don't think the impact that that program is having, I don't think I realize it initially coming in. Mm -hmm. um, because I find that in the work I do and doing classes and trainings, you know, a lot of times it's really helping people to believe in themselves. Right, right. And to believe that they have what it takes to accomplish whatever it is they desire. You know, I love this concept where, you know, I mean, there's plenty of places where I can go and learn, learn how to cook and, and maybe learn how to do whatever it is my, my passion might be at the time. But to prepare myself mentally and emotionally to be able to step into that world, Absolutely. into the, especially if I'm transitioning, you know, if I'm going through an a time in my life where, you know, I'm, I haven't been working for a while and I got to get myself back in, 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 in gear here, you know. Or a new career. A new yeah. career, or a new right. career, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it's good to be able to, I, I, I'm sure there's plenty of places that'll teach you to turn the oven on and pinch this yeah. and, and, and turn this over when, but then all of a sudden it's in with the next class and those guys are out there now kind of, right. you know, wandering. I love the concept of putting both things together. Well, How's it going so far? It's going fantastic. Is and, it? And like you said, you know, 
with a chef, a chef has to have a little patience mm -hmm. uh, for cooks, ideally, when they're coming into a new environment and stuff yeah. like that. But we kind of help with the learning curve. You know, if, if you come into and you've never worked in a restaurant before, you don't know the difference between parsley and cilantro, or you don't know how to use a knife or stuff like that, those are, those are skills that will kind of make it an easier transition. Sure. Well, and, well no, learning yeah. how is important. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's going great. We're a year and a half in. We've been going for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, this program actually was birthed out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh -huh. uh, we are owned by the Salvation Army. The Croc Center is owned by the Salvation Army. And 10 years ago, I used to be a chef at the shelter in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it, at that time, it was homeless people that we were teaching. At this, you know, now it's just, it's for the community. We really focus Dorchester, Roxbury right, right. community. And That's so, great. Yeah. You, sound, you sound just like my good friends, uh, uh, Carol O'Connor and Joe Murphy. They're doing the same thing for the veterans. Yeah, absolutely. Great. <laughs> you know, giving them giving them yeah. some kind of you know direction in in the culinary arts yeah. and stuff. And they are the arts, aren't they? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. Well, We're all secret musicians, you know. <laughs> tell me, you you let it out of the bag. What? Tell me a little bit about this band. Yeah, uh, so I, I have a cutting board. It's a wooden cutting board. It's about that thick. And one time we decided to put a guitar pickup in it. Um, and then a, a plug, just like a guitar plug, that goes into a special effects pedal that you can actually step on it, and then it goes into an amp. I can't believe I'm talking about. It. And then it goes into. <laughs> it goes into I an asked amp. you before yeah. if there was anything you do. And the uh, and so it, I actually cook in front of you know it's we used to do this in clubs and stuff like that. And there's a band that plays behind me. It's like two guitar players, a bass player, and a drummer. And we advertised ourselves as the only. We were called Shelby Park Soul Stew. And we were the only band that fed you after, after the performance because I would cook and I had blenders and mixers. Oh, you polite, gotta let so. me know when your next gig so is. Like, I gotta like be Bill there. Nye or something <laughs> like. But uh, it was that a blast. Exciting. Yeah, that fun. sounds fun. Yeah, well, but you know, it. chefs are. See we are. We're always listening to music on the radio. Yeah, we're yeah. always fiddling with instruments yeah, on yeah. our free time. I think not all chefs, but a lot of chefs have that kind of same arts mind, you know, that this show's all about. Is it, is it helping you inspire you? Is it something that's putting you in a mood? Uh, is it something that's setting the atmosphere in the kitchen? Man, is I'm it? so more pleasant to work with when I've got a little bit of music going on, and I think a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. You know, it, kind of, it just does something to you. I don't have to tell you. Yeah. It just yeah. does something to you, you yeah. know. Okay, and I think well, with great. our students, especially in that transition, just cooking also does something to you, that same kind of mind frame where yeah. it kind of... It will, you know, you might have a lot of stresses in your life, and it can kind of, you just zone out and you right. just think about cooking. You know what we have is we have, we have a, a slideshow, a quick slideshow to look at, a couple of pictures. Cool. Why don't we go through it? Here we are. Who's these cats? This is the, the that's current the graduating band, class. That's no, the that's the current graduating class. Yeah, that's, so we just had a, 11 graduates. And you know what? Two of the girls actually sang a song um, at the graduation. We Excellent. always do fantastic graduations. Um, and yeah, so two of the girls sing a song, but we had 11 graduates. Uh, and then so our next job is we try to get them a job out into the yeah, workforce. Sure. There's, I think it's Eric teaching. Yeah, that's me teaching one of the classes. <clears throat> Eric, you look good. I try, man, I try. <laughs> so with you guys, I gotta I got keep it up, man. I gotta keep it up. <laughs> now, how long, uh, Timothy, how long is the, um, is the, is the course? The class is 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. It goes uh, uh, 10 to 3. We actually do a, a, in the fall, the next class is uh, the first week of September. And we actually do two classes in the fall. So we'll do a, a, a 9 to 2 class and then a 3 to 8 class. And how many students you, are you accommodating? We usually take about 12. And it, you have to be, you interview at the Crocs. So if you'd want to go interview, you would yeah, just. Yeah. Or if you want to be in the class, you just simply go down the crock and grab an application. Oh, wait a minute. What's that there on the... Oh, well, I'm talking about that, that, is, that was on the right... Pork. There. Oh, that big pork so, roll. Oh, yeah. Thank you, honey. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, do you have a course for people that will only eat browns and beige food? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm always open. Absolutely. <laughs> That's absolutely. me, brother. Yeah. That, bro, what does I, that mean, brown and beige food? I only food? eat brown and beige food. I eat by color. Huh. Or blue. Yeah. That's blue. It. Huh. Not Interesting. Green, no green no food. No yellow and orange, green. <laughs> I mean, no veggies for Glenn, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that, you know something that's fascinating? It's great. How do you, uh, how's the response been? I mean, I, obviously you've got people coming in, in the more success you, you show. Uh, is there a max in the class that people have to get there early? 
Well, we only accept 12 students per time. Yeah. So, um, and we really, one of the, you know, reason why we have our life skills coach is we really focus on, on attendance, getting there on time, all those things well, of that's, job readiness. That's part of, Eric, Eric will yeah. tell you, that's part of being successful right. in life, is yeah. being, being responsible and being, you know, on time and getting your, absolutely. you know, being reliable. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So yeah. We, we take all that stuff super seriously because we know, and it's funny because Eric and I were talking, for us, the internal piece has been fantastic. We know we have a great product. And for us, it's just, you know, like anything, it takes money to run our program. Sure. So, like, the financial piece is the thing for us that, that we feel like is kind of the last piece of our puzzle to really mm -hmm. make us. We want to be sustainable for a long time. Sure. You know, ideally, you know, the program that I taught in Louisville is now ran by a student, you know, and one day that's where we want to get. You know, right. we want to... Sure. We want to have a student running this, and we want to have a student. Or you want a coach. student to open them up over there, and open and another absolutely. one over there. Yeah, absolutely. and then hire our students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. and the results have been great. I mean, we're at about 85% employment rate, 90% uh, of the class who start are finishing. That's amazing. Uh, so we're getting great results, you know. We got our students going on to do work equivalent to those going to schools, paying twenty, forty thousand 40000 to go to schools and our students are getting jobs equivalent and competing at the same level. That's excellent. Um, so that, that's phenomenal to be able to give that education to the community. But again, and, the sustainability and, is key. And we know that, you know, um, our students will still have a lot to learn when they get out of the class. And yeah. they're not going to learn everything that they would learn in a culinary school. Um, but we have some fantastic partners. Like uh, we just started to work with the Barbara Lynch Foundation and Wegman. Oh, Lynch, those cats, yeah. Yeah, yeah and the yeah. Graffon Restaurant Group. So we've got some really amazing. TD Gardens. TD Gardens has been a fantastic partner. So we're starting to accumulate all these really great partnerships. Well, that's fantastic. To go how, to the next level. How, chef, how do people get in touch with you to get started in this? Yeah, so they, they, they could either email me. Uh, my email is uh, Timothy Tucker at US. Are at use.salvationarmy. Or right. they, we're going to link that up down. to your yeah. name on the website. Yeah. So they just have to go to It's All About Arts and click your yeah. name. It'll go right to Yeah, and just know that the next class starts in September. So Excellent. The first week. And uh, we, we, we just right. love the program. We and Eric, how do people get in touch with you? Well, people can reach me. Um, my cell number is 857 231 2627. I'm doing work at the Croc Center, but I'm doing work around the city. Yeah, you're working a busy with guy. Healthy Baby, Healthy Child, Smart from the Start, different churches, organizations. So. Yeah. Doing a lot of great work and just, just really trying to pour back into the community. And my email is ericdhall22 at gmail.com. We're going to link that all up to the website. Great. Chef, thank you, thank you yeah, for coming. Thanks for the time. It was thanks a pleasure asking. having you, Eric. As, Glenn, as always, always, it's man. good to thank see you. you. Glenn. I'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> I, I work at the Boys and Girls Club where Eric's daughter goes. So that's absolutely. It's really cool. Listen, gang, you've been watching It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn. Listen, don't go away. We have a fabulous guest coming up next. Uh, uh, Val will be back up with us. And listen, gang, hang in there. You are watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go away.
Well, gang, thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. Welcome back. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Art. Listen, if you want to give us a call, we're at 617-708-3290. And uh, once again, if you'd like to uh, check us out, VOD at BNNTV.org, or call a friend and tell them outside the city that they can watch us right now, because we're streaming live right now on that set. And uh, right now, it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce you to Eleanor Briggs. Hello, Eleanor. How are you? Hi. Thank you for coming in tonight. You're welcome. This rainy Boston day. Yes. I, June. I fought my way all the way from New Hampshire. Did you really? Well, welcome. New Hampshire, one of my favorite states. Well, it's a wash in rain right <laughs> Is now. Is it really? <laughs> yes. I, I go all the way up to Littleton, though. I, I love it up in the mountains and what have you. But thank you very much for coming. And thank you for coming back on, Val. How are Absolutely. you? Absolutely. My pleasure. It's so nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you, too. Thank you. Uh, I like to, uh, you know, ask artists sometimes uh, if they had to characterize themselves, if they had, if there was a pull-down menu on your website and you had to decide to, this is the kind of artist I am. Photographer, I understand. But is there a style that you like to consider yourself? Ooh. Uh, I think that if I were able to articulate that, I might be a writer. A writer? Yes. Okay. Because how do you describe a photographer? Well, there's, there's different kinds of photographers. There's portrait, portrait photography, right. there's landscape photography, there's, you know, okay, so abstract photography. I'm very interested in people okay. and places okay. and things. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> to, to narrow it down. Uh, yes. How long have you been doing this? Since I was six. Six years old. Oh, my mm. goodness. That's great. One of the things I, I, I always I, I like to start off with, because we have a lot of students that watch this, what kind of equipment do you, are you using today? I use Canons. Yeah, Canons, yeah. Yeah. Now, how was that coming from the analog to the digital? It was hell. I'll bet. <laughs> it's very difficult for a photographer yeah. to do it. I'm sure it was. It's like learning another language. Mm -hmm. And also very scary, because I was convinced that everything I did, I would make a move that I didn't know was the wrong thing and it would make everything disappear. Oh, geez, yes. Things that I had oh, worked oh. really hard on doing, so. Apple save, apple save. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach was in a knot yeah, the entire time for a couple of years. Right. Do you see, do you see that, that uh, a photographer who works in an analog world has, has so much more, oh, there's so much more art involved because you've got the light to concern yourself with, you've got the time this shot, you've got a you got only 35 shots in this roll and the sun's going to be moving and all of this kind of stuff. Setting up a shot must be, now it's just boom, 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 boom. Oh, Find right, the one you like. automatically. Mm. I mean, it, you don't have to do a thing. Yeah, yeah. Which do you prefer? Well, I find that digital one still deals with light. Yeah. And uh, you have to set things up. Yep. Yeah. And um, track, sort of go hunting yeah. for mm -hmm. what you're after. Um, I thought I would never say it, but I really do prefer digital do you? at okay. this point. It's mm -hmm. so, it's so compact, and I find I can do a great deal more yeah. with the image. Yeah. So are you are you using the Adobe platform to go into Photoshop and, mm -hmm. and do what you know you might need to? Do? I use Lightroom and then oh, yeah. a little bit of Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a great program, Lightroom. Do you oh, miss yeah. the nostalgia of the analog at all? The stink of the dark room. Yes. <laughs> It's horrible, isn't the it? The mystery oh of what my is that? God. Fixer, right? Ooh. <laughs> Bad Ooh. stuff. Yes. Do you carry a point and shoot around with you? I don't. Oh, okay. I carry my iPhone. Well, there you go. We've all got a point and shoot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, do, you find, do you find that that is uh, so convenient that uh, your, your portfolio is blowing up? With, with iPhone photographs? With work. Oh. Or you, or when you go to take a picture, are you planning this and planning that, or are you capturing as you go through life? As I go through life. Okay. But I mean, within reason. Mm -hmm. I kind of know I'm not so interested in dogs or whatever. Right, right. You know, I can eliminate well, some stuff. Okay. So, so you do have a subject that you're very, very fond of. You've got some pictures of the wetlands we're going to look at that are just amazing. That are just fascinating stuff. We'll get to those in just a couple of oh, minutes. Okay. Um, how often are you going out now? Um, all the time. All the time. I mean, but I have a lot of 
it, there's a lot of computer work involved as okay. well. There is. I work um, f with a conservation organization in Asia a lot, uh -huh. and so I bring back huge numbers of photographs, and I have to go through them and process them to give them back what they want. Right. I shoot for them, and then I shoot for me at the same time. Oh, so you travel, do a lot of traveling mm -hmm. for your photography? Oh, that's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What's, what's your favorite place that you've traveled to to photograph? Um, India. Oh, my gosh, I can imagine the colors there must be beautiful. Yeah, the colors are fantastic. Do you edit in your camera as you're going along? A little bit, yeah. you know, throw out the junk. Yeah. But then you can't really edit too much because... No, I'm not talking content. I'm, I'm talking content is not as much as quality of right. the shot, maybe, you know. I mean, you can always frame and crop later, but I'm talking about, you know, you know this, you're going... Right. The little barrel. That's very, very useful. The round barrel. Very, very cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's great to eliminate stuff. We've got some pieces that you've worked on. We'd love to look at them. Will you walk us through them as we do that? Sure. Okay, let's and see what we got. So this is going to be the opening photograph of a show that I have coming up at, in Fitchburg, mm -hmm. at the Fitchburg Art Museum on June 28th. Yeah. And it's shot in Myanmar, or Burma, with That's beautiful. low tide. You can feel it. And we were stranded there. I was in a boat, and there was nothing going to happen until the water came in. We were oh, going, no. Going to where we were going to operate out of. But the, the, because the tide is so shallow, um, it just makes for a beautiful image. And then this is the Andaman Sea. Um, again, part of a marine park. And these images I like to think of as contemplative, kind mm -hmm. of meditative. Uh, they look better, very large, and you can look at them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, they're certainly serene. I love the gradient from the mm -hmm. top of the light sky down to the ocean. It's just wonderful. Yes. That's beautiful. And this is a wonderful place in Malaysia called the Blue Hole, and it's um, in, a, in a park called um, Taman Nagara. And uh, the water is very blue for some reason there. And again, it's something you can look at for a long time. Wow, it's mesmerizing. Mm. And then this is very close to home. That's all on the other side of the planet. And this is in my backyard. <laughs> this There's, is your backyard? What a yeah. beautiful yard you have. There's a, um, a brook called Moose Brook. And I go down it in a kayak and in, at dawn. All of oh, them. Awesome. Mostly this, these photographs are more. The name of my show is Morning Light. Mm -hmm. So this is from the morning. And um, it's going paddling along in the kayak. That's great. It's very, um, it's pristine, just beautiful landscape. It must be almost therapeutic in a way. Just oh, it is. It's very <laughs> exciting. And there's a lot of interest you can get from the reflection, uh, as well as the trees and, and other things. Well, look at the sky in that, in that water. Come oh, on. Yeah. yeah, and you can't see the sky yeah, itself. It's amazing. only a reflection, yeah. so it's kind of nice. Again. Oh, nice. wow. It's very silent. All you hear are... Uh, Woodpeckers, sometimes a great blue heron. I love how you um, focused on the reflection in the water. That's, it, I mean, it's it's like you flipped the world upside down. You're looking at it in a different yeah. perspective. It's very creative. Well, that's what I I like to kind of get people lost, so they really don't know what they're looking at. That's great. Quite. So you have to kind of keep looking. Tell me more about this Fitzburg show. Well. Um, as I said, it starts on June 28th, mm -hmm. and it was because last year they have a regional summer show every year with um, artists from within 30 miles, uh -huh. and uh, it's juried, and the juror chooses a first 
place, and I got that last year. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And Does that automatically get you in the next year? Well, it gets me a show the next <laughs> oh, year. Oh, your own show? Yeah. Okay, so that's I why see I have going. this show. That's great. So. Now, um, when, is there a reception we should know about? Absolutely. On the 28th, which is a Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, from 1 to 3. Great. Now, where is the Fitchburg Museum? In Fitchburg. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just go, museum, museum. <laughs> well, I can't remember the name of the street. It's That's right okay. near the boulder and the green. Oh, okay. You know? So it's by the common there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I know the area you're talking right. about. Well, that's fascinating. That's really, really nice. Uh, is there any place you, you haven't gone that you want to go to take some pictures? Um, or are they called photographs? We should call them photographs. I'm you sorry. You can call them anything. <laughs> pictures, photographs, images. Um, I'm not sure. I want to go back to Calcutta. Okay. That's places to go back to. That sounds, that sounds great. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for being here. Um, when you said you work with Canon, do you, do you have multiple cameras that you use, or do you have just your kind of fav favorite? No, you got to have a couple because when I, where I go, I, there are no camera stores in Asia. Oh, in case because I go way back into the into the outback, and uh, you got to bring everything. Do you bring a team with you? Well, you are never alone in Asia. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, it's that populated. <laughs> it's really populated, and so there's there's scientists and and um, guides and okay. local, uh, sometimes government officials mm -hmm. stuff. Whole group of us usually go from point to point. Mm -hmm. Now we have a place called the Arboretum here in Boston. I know it. It's one of my favorite places. Very beautiful. Yes, it is. And uh, when I was a kid, I used to I used to take pictures, I don't know, Rolly Flex. Mm. And I used to looking go look, down. Looking down on yes. the two lenses. Yeah. I loved it. Uh, and uh, I got some pictures that I'd taken from up, up there. I grew up here in Boston. Mm -hmm. Have you been ever do you have any collection of stuff from our lovely town here? I don't. I'm oh, sorry to we've say gotta get a sponsor to get you over here. Yes. To take some <laughs> take some Boston shots. Absolutely. What's coming up besides the show? Uh, is uh, the, are there any plans for the fall, or, or are you going to just kayak around your backyard? Well, I'm going to do that in the summer, and then in the fall, I'm going to um, Bolivia. Oh wow! Uh, Goodness, there's a, a wonderful expedition going on for this whole year, where the head of the Wildlife Conservation Society down there is um, moving a group of scientists to various parts of the country mm -hmm. to study them because it hasn't really been thoroughly studied. So I'll be going down You're going to, to photograph for one of the sections. Oh wow, what an honor. Yeah, it's That's... really fun. I want to thank you. Thank you so much. You're I welcome. appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Thank no, you. It for was great to have you. On. Please don't feel don't feel like you 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 should be a stranger. When you get back from Bolivia Will you come back in and visit us? And sure. Let us, know, let us know how you made out. Absolutely. Because I think it's fascinating what you do. You have a great life. And, uh, I do. It's fun. I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, once more, what's the date for the opening? June 28th, June, 1 to 3. 1 to 3, June 28th. And you're going to be there. I certainly am. I certainly hope so. We hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank do you. Mind, do you mind saying good night with us? Nope. Join us lovely. to say good night. Val, thank you. Thank you. Glenn. Great Val's view. Thank you. It's always a lot of fun to hear what's going on in this city. It's always my pleasure to yes. bring it to you. I'm sure. Thank you very much for being here. Eric and Chef, thank you very much. It was a great show. Suzanne, it's good to see you again. Uh, listen, gang, thanks an awful lot for being here with us tonight. This was an awful lot of fun. We're back in the swing now. We're going to be doing this for the every Monday night for the rest of the summer and uh, just just Val and I and a bunch of great guests. Yeah. Got if you go to itsallaboutarts.com, you can check it out. If you'd like to be a guest on this show, you go to itsallaboutarts.com and click on I Want to Do It, and we'd be more than happy to have you on the show with us. Listen, gang, get out there and do something artful for yourself this week, please. And like we like to say every week, please, we can't wait till we don't have to say it, but please keep in the forefront of your minds our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign soil. Please get out, do something artful for them. And uh, we'll see you next week, right? Bye-bye, folks.